Oh, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Pine Phone and really the specs of it and setting it up with any operating system you want on the internal EMMC drive. So the Pine Phone is an open source ARM Linux phone developed by Pine64. If you're someone who is a Raspberry Pi user, you can think of the Pine Phone as, as basically a super portable Pi with the capabilities of being a phone that you can text with, call, etc, etc. For the specs of the Pine Phone, we have a, for the CPU, we have a 64-bit quad-core 1.2 GHz ARM Cortex-A53 chip. For the GPU, we have the Mali-400 MP2 GPU chip. Mine came with a 32GB EMMC inside of it, and mine came with 3 gigs of RAM. So, as you can tell from the specs, this is definitely not a high-end device. But considering it's only $200, I mean it's understandable because you're not paying a lot of money for really high-end specs, it's a cheap phone. The device is great for Linux enthusiasts and for people who want a secure phone away from Google and Apple and major tech companies like that. But mine also came with a dock to be able to connect the Pine Phone to an external monitor, connect a mouse, a keyboard to the Pine Phone, or even USB drives. So as you can tell from the Pine Phone so far, it has a lot of capabilities and we're going to take a look at those in this video. So now we know what the Pine Phone is and what kind of specs it has, but if you look over on the Pine Phone operating system list, you see there are tons of them. You, you might be like right now, which one should I use? Well, that's what I'll be showing you right now. So there are tons of different Linux distros available for the Pine Phone, and I mean lots, lots and lots. People love developing things, and they really have done a good job with the Pine Phone. So in my opinion, the best way to find the best distro that supports your needs is to test out the multi-boot image developed by Magos. It's been a game changer for me since it's so easy to test out all of them individually. So it's basically something like Berry Boot or PinOS for the Raspberry Pi, but for the Pine Fun with lots of operating systems already pre-installed. You don't have to download each of them, they're already right there on the same SD card. You can go through them individually, test them out, and see which one fits your needs and which one you think has the best performance. So after downloading it from the Magos site right here, I will leave a link to it in the description. Click download. After that, it's going to be in kind of a weird format. And that weird format, for some reason, is only recognized by the USB imager. It's not recognized by Raspberry Pi imager. It's not recognized by Olana Etcher. You have to use USB imager for it to recognize the kind of weird format that this file is in. So after that, you're going to open up that file with USB imager and you're going to flash that to your SD card. This can be anywhere bigger than 16 gigabytes. I'm flashing this to a 64 gig USB drive and the Pine Phone only supports up to 2 terabyte of the SD card, which most people aren't going to have anything bigger than that, obviously. So after that, you're going to flash it and you're going to, the Pine Phone back of the phone actually opens up. So you're going to pull the back off. It comes off pretty easily. And right here, there's going to be two slots. There, one is for a SIM card and one is for an SD card. You're going to want to put the SD card in the one above because the one on the bottom is meant for SIM cards. So push the SD card in the one above, put the back of your phone back on. If it has charge, hit the power button, and bam, you should have the multi-boot image on your Pine Phone that easily. It should work pretty easily. And so here we can literally look at boot into any one we want. So before choosing the one you want to daily drive, I'd recommend going through all of these, test out the ones you like the most, and then after that, in the later part of this video, I'll be showing you how to install that one you like the most onto the integrated EMMC drive on your phone, so you won't have to use that SD card anymore. So, I know I didn't go through every individual operating system really detailed with the multi-boot image, but if I did do that, 
that would take hours to go through all of them so that's gonna have to be your job guys but so after you find the one that you like the most which i really do enjoy arch arch is one of my favorite linux distros available i do prefer arch over a debian bay distro so i really do like arch with the fosh desktop environment which is basically known for mobile devices so i've went ahead and downloaded that from the website I'll, have a link. I'll also leave a link to in the description, but find the one you like the most, go to the PinePhone OS website, download the one that you enjoy the most. After downloading it to your system, we are gonna wanna need this tool on an SD card called Jump Drive. But Jump Drive is a tool that basically takes your phone's EMMC drive that's inside of it and shows it to your computer as like a USB drive or external SSD. But if you already flash the multi-boot image to an SD card, Jump Drive is actually already pre-installed on there, so we, we can just go ahead and skip that step. So if you have the multi-boot image already installed on your phone, leave it there, you're good. So after that, we're going to want to plug in our cable from our phone into our computer. After that, you're going to open up the multi-boot image, scroll down till you see the Jump Drive, boot from the jump drive and your phone will automatically recognize your phone's internal EMMC as a USB drive. So now we're ready to install the operating system. Now open up Bolana Etcher, choose the Arch or whatever operating system you're using and choose your phone's internal EMMC drive, hit flash. That thing can take a while because I just never got really good speeds with flashing to the internal EMMC, but after it's done, unplug it, take the SD card out of the back of the phone, and put the phone, the back of the phone back on, boot from it, and bam, you'll have whatever operating system you wanted on the internal EMMC of your Pine phone that easily. So, in the earlier parts of this video, I've talked about how to install your favorite operating system onto the eternal EMMC of the Pine Phone and testing out the multi-boot image, but now I kind of just want to go over Arch with the Fosh desktop environment on my Pine Phone to give you guys an idea of just this operating system because it's one of my favorites. So, let's talk about it. So, Fosh is basically a customized version of GNOME for mobile device it's like the pine phone in it this is running gnome 40 if you're interested if we open up settings we can go over to about and you can see that this is gnome 40. right here we're running gnome 40.2 we're running this with wayland and it's just pretty cool so now let's talk about the fosh desktop environment and really what this looks like so we hit right here we have cellular, we have Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth, battery, we have rotation. Let's turn that on, see if it works. So it definitely doesn't do it very gracefully, but I mean, it does work all right. We can turn on, why did I do that? Yeah. So it's cool that it works. We have our notifications and then we have our torch, which is a flashlight. Also the flashlight is pretty bright. I was surprised to see how bright it was. It's pretty cool. We can turn our audio from here or in a bright our screen brightness from here too. Or we have our two buttons right here and you see it just works like that. I mean, it's kind of big on the screen. I don't get it, but if it works, I mean, it works. Next right here, we have a calculator, which is just a pretty standard calculator. Works well, five times five. Right there, 525, it works well. And it's cool to see it working. So if you wanna exit, we hit right here. And we can just swipe up like an iPhone or any Android device, really. Next, we have Clocks, Document Viewer, and Firefox. If we open up Firefox, test out some web browsing and see if Firefox does work. So it takes a while to launch, but then it should theoretically work okay. So we go Pi 4, hit enter. Let's see how fast it loads up. So it's, it's not the slowest thing. Is it the fastest thing? Definitely not, but it seems to load up all right. If we click on something like here's the Raspberry Pi Foundation and we click right here at exit. And I mean, it definitely, the scrolling and everything is a bit hard, but it is working and that's kind of what matters. And it's just, this is a development device. It's really not meant for daily use right now. So I can understand why it's like this. So if we exit back, we can go over to youtube.com and test out some video playback and see if YouTube actually will work on here. Because I personally haven't tested YouTube yet actually, so I'm not sure if it is gonna even work. So let's go right here to, where's Big Buck Bunny? Click right here for Big Buck Bunny. 
big buck money. I know I'm not spelling it right. It's I have a hard time typing on this keyboard for some reason. I don't know. So right here we have Big Buck Bunny. It's gonna probably be at like something really low, like 360, 480p. And our speaker right here, we could turn it up if we want. So right here. I mean right now what are we at we're at 360 right now so if we wanted to put this in picture in picture let's see if it works huh picture in picture is actually working kind of that's pretty cool to see picture in picture working on here with video if we click on it we can just go back and I mean the video is playing all right is this watchable totally is it gonna be some awesome 4k video no but it is watchable so that's pretty awesome close out of there the web browsing video playback is just all right geary is a male client we have htop with his system resource usage and if you're lollipop maps megapixels which is going to be the camera i do want to warn you the camera on this thing is not the greatest obviously but does it work it works okay and we'll be seeing that in this video so right here you see the ground right here i mean it definitely isn't the coolest thing ever but it is working so we can just do anything we like with that Next right here we have settings, we have software, which software actually is an all right software center. So if we want anything, we go to games. A lot of them may say don't, they don't work on here though. That is a problem I've been encountering lately and I just don't know why. So right here we can go to this editor right here, we click install and it theoretically should just go ahead and install it right here on our system. So it's pretty cool. And I mean, we have our terminal. This is this is real Linux. You can do anything you want on Linux on this small ARM Linux device. How cool is that? So yeah, this is Arch Linux on the Pine Phone with the Fosh desktop environment. I could totally go a little bit deeper, but this is all I'm going to go in this video. And I really, this is one of my favorite operating systems for the Pine Phone, and I would really recommend it for you guys to check it out yourselves if you do want a Pine Phone, or if you're thinking about getting a Pine Phone. So this is Arch Linux with Fosh. So to conclude this video, the Pine Phone is an awesome device, especially for people who enjoy tinkering and enjoy Linux. For me, I mean, it's not going to be replacing my own iPhone SE second generation that I daily drive, but will I still carry this around sometimes? Totally. Like when I'm going to school in my backpack, I'll just throw this in and I'll, if I'm bored, I can tinker around with Linux. How cool is that? I really do enjoy the concept of being able to carry on Linux in your pocket in such an awesome little device like the Pine Phone. The Pine Phone really is a unique device and I really do enjoy it. So I mean and I would would, would I recommend you guys this phone? Totally. I would totally recommend you guys to get this phone. If you're a Raspberry Pi user, if you're an ARM Linux user, or even if you're new to this stuff, the Pine Phone is a great start. You'll learn tons of stuff with it, and it really just is amazing. So I want to say a huge thank you to Pine64 for actually sending this device over to me for review purposes, and I hope this guy kind of goes over installing the operating system and just helps you guys out to know what to do with your Pine Phone once you initially get it. So yeah, it would be amazing to subscribe, maybe that like button, and... Thanks for watching.